Good evening. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful, Lord. We'll become your presence, hear your word, and fellowship one another, and most of all with you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's open our Bibles over here to the, the book of Mark, please. We'll start here in Mark chapter 11. And Jesus says here in verse 22, Jesus answered him, have faith in God. Then he went on to say, for fairly I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to sea, he shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall but saith. Now let's go here to the book of Philippians, please, and read here in Philippians chapter 4. Notice here what the scripture says here in verse 13. I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. That's one place we can start at making faith confessions. Decree and declaring what the word says about us. By saying, taking Philippians chapter, that's one of my first verses of scripture I learned. Begin to decree and declare, I can do all things through Christ. Soon after I got born again, heard some preacher probably preaching about it, but nevertheless, praise God, started there. Instead of saying we can't, you know, based on our ability or based on our skill or based on our talent, we can begin to decree and declare. In the midst of facing that, I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. And notice that the Bible also tells us here in this verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. So right there with verse 13 and verse 19, we have two scriptures there we can hold fast to our confession of faith. The Bible teaches to hold fast our confession of faith. And we should do that. And every day as believers, when faced with challenges, begin to, begin to say, I can do all things through Christ. And that my God shall supply all of my need according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. How can we do this? Because of God's strength that he gives us through Jesus Christ. How will God meet all of our needs? Well, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That means it's not based on the economy. It's based simply on God and the power of God. And as believers, this is what we need to say. Is that I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. And not only that, but my God shall supply all my need according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. You know, go to us over here. Keep going. You're right. A bunch of pages. We'll come over here to 1 John. And let's read here in 1 John what the scripture says here in chapter 4. Now, verse 4 says here, You are of God, little children, overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Now, there's another verse we can hold fast to. And should. Every day, decree and declare, and the greater one dwells inside of me. I can do all things through Christ, who gives me his strength. My God shall supply all of my need, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So in the face of fear or doubt or unbelief or anything the enemy would do to try to slow us down, is we decree and declare, in the midst of those situations, what the word says. The greater one dwells inside of me. Each one of us believers, the Holy Spirit came and dwelt inside of us from the moment we received Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we need to depend on his strength, that he'll lead us and guide us, the Holy Spirit, through this life. And not only that, but every day decree and declare what the Word of God says. You know, back over here in Philippians chapter 2, now the scripture says here, in verse, let's start in verse, uh, let's start in verse 8. Uh, verse 9, wherefore God has not exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things that are near, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now there's another verse we can use, the name of Jesus. These three verses here tell us the name of Jesus above every name. And we have authority on this earth as believers to go forth and rule and reign in Christ Jesus over any obstacles, anything that would try to harm us or hinder us or keep us from going on to do what God told us to do or what we know in our spirit we're supposed to do. Face those kind of challenges. You know, we all have simple situations in our life that we don't have the skill in the natural or the talent in the natural. But thank God we have the greater one inside of us. And that's what we need to always remind ourselves of the greater one lives inside of us. That we can do all things through Christ. We have the mind of Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 19. Now we got Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, and Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, and 1 John 4, 4. Hey, think of all this. Put this all together. This is how we have, wear the armor of God. Uh, you know, this is what protects us in this life. And when we're faced with challenges, hey, boldly decree and declare, this is what the word says. Jesus said there. In Mark eleven twenty three, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever say in this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast to sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall but saith. 
And we know from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4, that we have favor with God and man. And that's something else we should always say. In the midst of how this is going to be done, I don't know anybody. Well, we have favor with God and man. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us in 1 John 4, 4. And he leads us and guides us in this life. So we need to learn to be led by an inner witness about what to do. What's going to help us do this is always decreeing and declaring what the Word of God says about anything in our life to build ourselves up on promises because it's going to produce confidence in our life, in our heart. We'll begin to see in our mind, in our heart, that, yeah, God's going to work this thing out because the Word of God says. He'll cause everything to work out for our good in Romans 8, verse 28. As we pray in the Spirit, taking verse 26 and verse 27, applying those in our life and putting extra time praying in the, praying the Spirit, waiting on God, seeking God for direction, and the Holy Spirit will guide us through life. He wants to do that. That's, that's one of his you know, functions that he does in a believer's life, if we can say it that way. Is this, no, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. He promised me he'd lead me and guide me through this life. And, he'd get, and God gave me favor with God and man. And not only that, the greater one dwells inside of me. That's when we're faced with situations that in the natural, we be intimidated. But we can boldly decree and declare in the face of intimidation. The greater one dwells inside of me. I can do all things through Christ. Because you'll be led to some places that God will lead you to go. And, you know, you'll be faced with challenges there that, and, you know, with the, they'll be, in the natural will be scary. But thank God we got the greater one inside of us. And we need to just learn to depend on him to lead us and guide us. And he will. He'll show us what to do. He'll reveal to us what to do. He'll work it out for our good as we just keep decreeing, declaring, Take those scriptures like we just read there. I can do all things through Christ. My God shall supply all my need, according to rich glory, but Christ Jesus. And answering all that doubt and unbelief and that anything would come to us that would try to intimidate us. Say, no, I, you know, I refuse that in Jesus' name. And just stand against the intimidation. Stand against the fear. fear. Feeling the fear. Feeling the intimidation is bold to decree and declare, I can do all things through Christ's strength. But my God shall supply all my need, according to rich glory, but Christ Jesus. And just start right where you're at with that. Don't wait till maybe some things get better. No, have a habit every day of decreeing and declaring what the promises say. We have the name of Jesus, so we use the name of Jesus against problems, mountains, situations. And of course, we approach God in prayer in the name of Jesus. And Jesus gave us his name. He told us, these signs shall fall down and believe in my name. And one of the signs is, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak in new tongues, take up serpents, and drink a deadly thing, and shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands sick, and they shall recover. Thank God. These signs shall follow and believe. And it's good to decree and declare in Jesus' name what the Word says. And take in God's Word and use it. Think about David. I mean, he shows up because his dad told me to go see his brothers and take this food to them. He shows up, and there's Goliath there. Now, his brothers aren't, none of the army of Israel doing anything about this problem. And David has the same covenant they have, or they have the same covenant he has. And David showed up and began to tell Saul and whoever wanted to hear that I was taking care of my sheep. And a lion came down and grabbed one of the, the lambs. And a bear came down and grabbed another one. And I, you know, I took both those out. <laughs> it's got what cool eyes breaks. Well, you know, how'd he do that? He had faith in his covenant he had. And not only that, this uncircumcised Philistine would be no different. Yeah, talking this way. Now, what does brother say? We know your pride, known as your heart. In other words, why don't you go, go back and take care of those few sheep? But David, think about this. He faced his problem, running towards it, decreeing, declaring his covenant in the name of the Lord God of Israel. And look at them, how he was able to do this, depending on what God had given him. And that's what we depend on as believers, is we depend on the name of Jesus. Sure, we face situations that are scary, in the natural. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let be afraid. I mean, amidst the fear, in a scary situation, just begin to decree and declare it. And by faith. You know, God has not given me a spirit of fear. My heart's not troubled, and I'm not afraid. My heart's not troubled, and I'm not afraid. I was out one night, and uh, it just all of a sudden, I just like fear took over. I realized I'm by myself. What am I going to do here? And I remember I heard a minister had just recently read that scripture and talked about what Jesus said there in John. I think it's chapter 14, where Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled, and, 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 uh, let it, and be not afraid. So I said, out there, it was dark, 
cold weather outside. I said, my heart's not troubled and I'm not afraid. Oh, I, the, the fear was, <laughs> the fear was taken over, but I kept saying that. And the thought came, yeah, you are, you're trembling. I said, nah, my spirit's not afraid. I don't know what else to say. I'm not, my heart's not troubled. I'm not afraid and fought my way through it. Well, now I'd heard a minister just recently teach and he was, you know, whatever he was teaching, I'm sure it's about faith, but what he was teaching on, he just referred to that. And think about this. It was brought back to my attention. Yeah, apply it, you know. Thank God. That, that's what's so great about listening to the word being taught. Because suddenly it comes back to you and I. And that's why God gave us ministers to teach us the authority of the believer, who we are in Christ Jesus, and how to rule and reign in this life. And they'll teach us how to apply God's word to our life. And as we keep listening to those messages, you know, like CDs today or all the other stuff on the Internet, thank God we can do that like 24-7. It's always available to us. And we can constantly, we used to have to just wait, you know, for we get the set of tapes in the mail. You see someone, some minister have a set of cassette tapes like CDs today. And they'd be offering them in their newsletter. Well, we'd, sign, we'd write off for them. And now it seemed like it took forever before we got those tapes in the mail. Well, then, then it came CDs. And thank God for that. But now you got the Internet. And all that stuff's out there just power packed with information. Anyway, so as we hear ministers teach us. How to apply God's word. Anointed ministers. Ministers got experience. Ministers know what they're talking about. They know stuff you and I don't know. They've got experience that you and I don't have. So what they'll do is God will use them by the Holy Spirit to teach a subject. And it's amazing how that comes back to us. Just like that night I was outside. There and realized by myself and the, and the fear is trying to consume me. And I remember that minister say, say that in the midst of it. Praise God. And I did. And kept doing it and kept doing it and kept saying it. You know, address the problem. Feeling the fear, speak the word. Feeling the dread, speak the word. You know, feeling the, the feelings of being afraid or stressed out, hey, speak to it in Jesus' name. And just keep using the name of Jesus. Just keep decreeing and declaring what the word says about it. Again, when it's a lack of ability, I can do all things through Christ. Situations where we don't have enough in the natural, my God should supply all of my need, according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. Faced with intimidation, greater is he that is me than he is in the world. I have the mind of Christ. I can do all things through Christ. My God shall supply all my need according to his rich glory by Christ Jesus. So what we're doing is we're taking God's promises and we're using them in our life to resist, to face the problems, the challenges that everybody faces. But see, we can go with confidence in the midst of the fear, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit who dwells inside of us will bring back a scripture to us. And then we got the name of Jesus that we can always use and should. I take authority of that in Jesus' name. I bind that in Jesus' name. I refuse that in Jesus' name. I don't accept that in Jesus' name. I stand against that in Jesus' name and begin to decree and declare it. Jesus did. He said it was written and quoted scripture. The centurion said, just speak the word only and my servants be healed. Now, that's how you and I should respond to problems is that we speak the word. That's why we want to know scriptures. We want to know promises. We want to know who we are in Christ. We want to know what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And until the believer knows that, they can use the name of Jesus against fear, against situations that would try to intimidate us from doing what God wants us to do. And God promised he'd never leave us nor forsake us. By the Holy Spirit, he dwells inside of us, whether we feel him or not. He promised he'd never leave us. And by boldly decreeing and declaring, well, we are what the word says we are. And by boldly facing situations, my God shall supply all my need, according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. The Old Testament says, I will go in the strength of the Lord thy God. God is the strength of my heart. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, we just have to, like James said, in the midst of a situation, count it all joy. That means you may not feel like doing it, but begin to praise God. And we know we should praise God. And he didn't bring the problem, but in the midst of that, we can praise God and, and give thanks to God. I mean, that's how Jonah got out of the whale, is begin to give thanks to God. And got delivered out of this situation, dilemma that he was in. And that's how we get out of situations. Paul and Silas got out of jail by singing praises unto God. The Bible said in Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Now, I'm sure maybe, well, I'm not sure, but they probably may not feel like it, but they did it. And think about this. They got miraculously rescued by the Spirit of God. And as they interceded for Peter in, in Acts chapter 12, they'd already killed, uh, killed James, and they intended to kill Peter. And Peter was fast asleep. But there was a prayer meeting in Acts 12, was praying for Peter. And an angel came in and rescued him out of jail. And Peter went to the prayer meeting. Think about this. 
prayer will do. And God gave us the way to approach him. He said, call upon me in a time of trouble, and I'll deliver an honor. With long life will I satisfy him, show him my salvation. Now, all these promises are in God's word, just waiting for you and I to take advantage of them. And thanks, you know, think of all the times we've been taught God's word by ministers that were trained of God, anointed by God, anointed by the Holy Spirit, gifted by God, who've been through, who's had to use the sword of the Spirit to get through battles and trials and situations and have that experience and have that anointing and have that knowledge and have that practice that they put it in practice. And think about that. That's what testimonies do for you and I. We hear someone testify about something, and we come to find out, well, how'd this happen now? I just used the name of Jesus. I took authority in Jesus' name. Or I prayed. I took Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Jesus said, therefore I send you what things serve desire. When, when you pray, believe you see them and share them. And I desired this job. There's no way in the world I'm going to get this job. So, but I prayed. And I believed I received it. And God opened the door. Well, now, we hear stuff like that, those testimonies. Remember, faith comes by hearing the word. But testimonies will inspire us because later on we're thinking about, now, what that sister do, what that preacher do, what that person do? See, well, now, what they say? Now, remember, they said they opened up their Bible and they read these scriptures and they decreed and declared they were healed. Well, that's, that's, those are testimonies. Jesus had the woman with issue of blood share a testimony, and she began to create, tell what had happened. Well, that's those that still goes on today. Every time you know you read Mark chapter five, you got this lady's testimony who'd been bleeding for twelve years. Nothing better, rather grew worse. Been to all the physicians, you know, physicians, and ran out of money. And one day she heard of Jesus. She must have heard that he had a healing ministry and people touch him, get healed, because she said, "If I can just but touch his garment, I'll be made whole." Well, now she what she do? She acted. This lady does not want to stay the same. Bless her heart, she's done everything she could do. Went to all the doctors, finally ran out of money. So she doesn't want to stay afflicted. She's been bleeding for 12 years. But she heard of Jesus. Well, she heard a message. Someone must have shared with her about testimonies or whatever because it inspired her faith and to go where Jesus is at. She could have had an attitude. She could have said, well, I've spent all money on doctors. If God wanted to be healed, he'd use one of those doctors. And those doctors just after the money. And I tell you, if God, you know, Jesus would come by my house if God wants me healed, she could have said all that and died with that condition. But no. Think about the determination of this dear woman. The, the tenacity she had. And think about the men in Luke chapter 5. They brought their friend there. That man was crippled. Four guys carried him. So there was born at four. You know, for a long time, I thought he had the born of four disease. It was just four guys carrying him. They got there, and the house is filled, right? Someone gets the idea, let's take off the roof and let him down. Now, this guy's crippled, and they, someone comes up with this idea. So they do it. They let, take off the top of the roof and hoist this guy down in the midst of before Jesus. In a crowd of all those people. And had all those religious Pharisees, you know, there. Oh, yeah. See, they're, they're, they didn't like die Jesus, that Jesus said, to die, die sins with you. And they say, take up that boy and walk. They didn't like the idea. He, they didn't like. The, they didn't like the whole thing. But they definitely didn't like the idea that Jesus said, "Thy sins forgive me." Which is you say, "Thy sins forgive me," or say, "Rise up and walk." But that you may know the Son of Man have power to forgive sins. I say, "You rise, take thy bed and walk." And the meaning was man whole, was made whole. And what Jesus tell that man? He told the man go home. He didn't want Jesus. Jesus doesn't want this guy staying here because if these people that's here in this building, in this house, they could talk to this guy of his healing. And so Jesus told him to go home. And sometimes Jesus told people not to go back to their home or got back to their town. That's how much. And Jesus led a blind man out of town to get him healed. Think about this, the doubt and unbelief that was in that crowd that tried to affect people from receiving their healing. And that's still that same spirit still around. Well, no, that's why we need to many times isolate ourselves by listening to the word being taught. What do you mean? Well, just constantly playing that CD player or however we're listening to the word. Keep all those audio messages going to us night and day by listening to the word. Constantly, what are we doing? We're building ourselves up. We're getting ourselves fully persuaded. We're getting ourselves fully convinced because we may be in some kind of battle or some kind of challenge or we just know in our heart we need to be keep doing this. And by doing that, see, this gets us built up. Because there's always going to be challenges that come along, but we'll be much more in a position to pass the trial or test or whatever you want to call it, the problem by keeping ourselves built up in God's word. That's why it's important for you and I to get built up, get our confidence built up. So in Jesus' name, we're faced challenges. The first thing comes to us is what the word says. 
And we, when we take scripture, like we read there in Philippians 4, verse 13, and Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, and read there in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, those are scriptures going to help us face situations. Greater is he that is meaning, he is in the world. I have favor with God and man in Proverbs 3, verse 4. When we're faced with inabilities, we didn't have the talent, didn't have the skill in the natural. We have the Spirit of God resting inside of us. And what we want to do is just take the word and speak it out of our mouth. Use the authority that God gave us in Jesus' name. And so that's what makes us more effective by passing tests and trials and, and live a victorious Christian life. And of course, praying in tongues. Every day, we need to spend time praying in tongues. Keep ourselves built up. You're driving someplace, you're doing some things, you know, fussing around the house, whatever you want to call it. That could, that could be, we could be praying in spirit while we're doing that. And what is that doing? Well, according to the Bible, Jude, the scripture said in verse 20, we build up our most holy faith praying the Holy Ghost. We get edified, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 and 4 said. We get built up. Thank God we can pray in our known language. That's important. Thank God we can speak God's word. That's absolutely important. But thank God God gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church, to each believer, can receive the infant Holy Spirit and begin to pray in tongues. And what does that do? Helps us pray for the known and unknown, helps build us up. And again, in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 and 12, it says, For stammering lips of the tongue will I speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest, cause the weary to rest, and this is refreshing. So we get rest, we get refreshed, and we get to hear from God. Suddenly, we just you know in our spirit, this is going to be okay. Or we know in our spirit, we need to do this. It just, that answer just comes to us. Why? Because the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. And God gave us a way that we can communicate to him by praying in the spirit. That doesn't do away with praying our known language. But there is, a, a, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit, us praying in the spirit. Jesus said, you should receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. And you should be witness to me, both in Judea, 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 Judea Jerusalem, and other most parts of the earth. Now, how are we going to, Samaria, Judea, and Jer Jerusalem, and other most parts of the earth. There you go. So, how are we going to be a witness? Well, with the power of God. The anointing of God. The Holy Spirit letting us know, like Jesus knew at the well, that woman had been married five times before. So, he ministered to her that way. You know, not with condemnation. So, he's there to liberate her. Well, but, but, but you and I being led by the Holy Spirit, suddenly God will use us to say something to someone. It just comes to us. Or we see something in the Spirit. The Lord reveals to us about what to do. So there is those benefits there that belong to you and I in Christ Jesus. And we need to take advantage of all of them. We have the name of Jesus. We read there in Philippians chapter 4. No, excuse me, chapter 2, verse 9 through 11. And then we read there in Philippians 4, verse 13 and verse 19. That God will supply all of our needs and we can do all things through Christ. We read there in 1 John 4, 4, the greater is he that is in us and he is in the world. We read there in Mark eleven twenty three 23, how to speak to mountains. How to take authority with situations and speak to them and tell them to go in Jesus' name. And we know from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Facing the fear, facing the, the scary stuff, say in Jesus' name, I rebuke that. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Jesus' name, I'm not afraid in Jesus' name. Jesus said, told me, let not your heart be troubled, neither let me be afraid. My heart's not troubled, and I'm not afraid. My heart's not troubled, and I'm not afraid. My heart's not troubled, and I'm not afraid. God does not give me a spirit of fear. I resist fear in Jesus' name. That's how we plow through these things. There'll be a lot of things in life that, you know, in looking at the natural, it looks scary. I mean, we're kids. We're God's children. But God is with us. And we'd all say amen in church if we heard that. Yeah, amen, God's with us. No, we need to realize in the midst of the fear, he's, in, he's with us. And we need to agree and declare that to ourselves, to the problem, to the fear, to the anxiety, to whatever it may be that we're faced with that stop us, to in, intimidate us, to keep us from going on living victorious life. And when stress comes or anything like that, that has to be rebuked. And we need to... We need to Teach yourselves that instantly when those things show up, the first sign of them, the first indication of them, that we talk to it then. We say no in Jesus' name. I don't accept it. I don't refuse. I don't, uh, I don't receive it. I refuse it in Jesus' name. I stand against it. How do we do that? With our mouth. In the name of Jesus, speaking of Scripture. We don't, have, we don't know a Scripture, then you keep using the name of Jesus. Because his name's above every name. So the sooner or later, the problem's got to go. The situation's got to change. And people, you know, get into anxiety. Anxiety comes to them. You know, fear comes to everybody. 
Uncomfortable feelings comes to everybody. Dreading to do something comes to everybody. Being intimidated, the feeling to be intimidated comes to everyone. In the midst of that, begin to boldly decree, the greater one dwells inside of me. We're, we're, we're more than conquerors, the Bible says. So before we face the crowd of people we have to face or go through the door, I mean, this hotel I had to go to, and it was, at that time, it was very intimidating to me. And so, uh, you know, just, uh, just all kinds of thoughts are coming to me. But I made myself keep saying, greater see, greater see this in me than he is in them. You know? Anyway, so before I'd walk in the door, I'd make myself close my eyes and see myself with no fear in Jesus' name. No, oh, the fear was, yeah. The, the fear just wanted me to get in my car and leave kind of stuff. But, praise God, got through the door and praise God had mercy and worked the whole thing out. But anyway, the, the, those things come to us. Fear comes to everybody. Worry, anxiety, stress, depression, oppression comes to everybody. Sometimes it seems like we come all at once. But we have the name of Jesus. We got praying in the spirit that keeps us built up. We have authority as a believer that we exercise in Jesus' name. We have promises that need to be coming out of our mouth. So this is what David's doing when he's facing Goliath. What is David doing? He's talking his covenant. And his brothers aren't doing it. They had the same covenant he had. Saul had the king. The king of Israel had the same covenant David had. But what did David do? David used the covenant he had. That's what you and I, brothers and sisters, this is what we need to do. We need to use what God gave us. He gave us his power. He gave us his name. He gave us his authority. And what have we been doing with it? Well, I pray to God we always use it and remind ourselves to do it and keep ourselves praying in the spirit because that's going to help keep us build up on God's word. It's going to help edify us and help charge us up in God's word. That's why the reasons why God gave it to us. And what the first thing we do is, as people, we receive Jesus Christ, Lord. Then we become born again. We become saved. And the next step we can do is become baptized in the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other tongues. And take that, what we've received, and just keep praying in tongues. And keep, especially when we don't know what to do. Especially when we got to make decisions. Because we need to hear in our spirit about what God wants us to do. Make an investment or whatever you're doing. you got a 401k. You're trying to figure out what to do with it. Whatever. Pray in the spirit. And what? Until we know we have peace in our heart. And sometimes we'll be faced with fear. But we know in our heart we got to do it anyway. And that's how God gets us through these situations. Father God, we pray tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the power you gave us in the name of Jesus and the authority of the believer. We give you all the praise and glory. And I thank you, Lord, for each person watching, Lord. Every one of their needs are met in abundance. They're healed. They're delivered. They have the wisdom of God, the peace of God in their spirit. And God, I thank you for directing them and guiding them in every decision in life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we got church on the phone tonight at 7 o'clock. That phone number... An access code should be right here on our Facebook page. Why don't you join in? We have communion. Take advantage of it. You know, you got a lot of people talking and going on, but it's a great time in God's Word. The way, kind of way we're having church right now. And I, I want to encourage you, if you haven't done that, or if you have, either way, join in tonight, 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code, again, should be right here on our Facebook page. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jesse Rich Ministries, it's free. Uh, you'll get a notification when the next video is being loaded up. And then you can watch it at your own leisure. That's They're like 24-7. And, you know, watch us on Facebook Live. It started out in the morning at 8 o'clock and then throughout the day. I'm so glad you're able to join in tonight. you got a prayer request? You, if you want to, you could email me at jesserichministries.com or call in tonight. And we'll create, uh, pray and agree with you for whatever scripture in Jesus' name. Really so glad you're able to watch tonight. I consider it a privilege and honor to be with you. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Money. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.